Welcome to Mays in Life. I'm David Mays and this video is going to be quite a bit different than usual. Uh, this is actually going to be a review of Action Track or Action Tracks traction board. I have come out here in a uh, virtual playground of sorts. I've told a lot of people since I started this this build of the Jeep that I'm not building it for a rock crawling um, dedicated to rock crawling. It is a is something that I want to be able to go across the United States with and then turn around and be a capable vehicle when I get there. That said, this is a fantastic place to test what you have built to see if it's going to, you know, what level of trail can you handle. And so uh, this is not that far from me. It's probably about 40 minutes from me and it's just a power line trail and it's a, it's a beautiful place to test stuff like this. Now, we're gonna to try to get stuck so that you can see the benefits and the use of these traction boards. I got the benefit of being able to join the maker of Action Tracks in Wichita, Kansas. And so we're gonna to cut to that right now just so the, the designer of these traction boards can give you a little insight on why he made them the way he did. And then we'll come back to me and I'll show you a little more in detail of what he means by that and hopefully put some of that uh, into action. Here we go. Welcome everyone. I'm David Mays with Amazing Life and I have an excellent opportunity that came to me as I was coming back from Oregon uh, on a, about a three-week trip and came by Kansas City. Uh, it's not Kansas City. Close. Everyone thinks Kansas only has one town but actually we're in Wichita. <laughs> okay, so uh, came by here in Wichita, Kansas where action tracks are made. And this is KC. Hello, David. Great to have you come by the shop. We always love to uh, see our friends from the different parts of the country. Absolutely. KC, I, I appreciate you kind of giving, us, giving me a little bit of time here to kind of um, show the reason why I chose Action Tracks. Thank you. Over other brands. Uh, right. And so I kind of wanted to hear your perspective and give us um, the lowdown of, in your mind, why Action Tracks are better than all the leading brands out there. Sure. So, we probably have as many or more uh, uses of recovery board in the field as anybody on the planet. So when we went to design our American-made recovery board. You know, I'm going to stop you there. So one of the things that was a big one for me is as much as much as possible while my wife and I have been building out the Jeep and the, and the trailer and the rig and everything, uh, we have searched to do as much as possible American-made gear. And if not American-made, uh, if, if, if for some reason we can't find it 
American made, non China made. Feel that. What's that feel like? Yeah, and, and that was the big thing that I, when I got your boards in, I could tell that there was a different feel in the material. Mm -hmm. And so this one is a, it's a very rigid board, which also means it'll break. Yeah. I mean, there's no, no question. I can, I can feel it. That feels like a plastic snow it, shovel. It's also, it it's also got really no grip. That doesn't, there's not a lot there. So. And we'll get to this in a minute, but you'll notice it's almost no handhold, extremely impractical to actually, uh, you can't even grip it, let alone work it like a tool. Much less with gloves on, which you probably will be, will yeah. be wearing. There are two key components that go into a recovery track. Okay. Then there's one slightly more esoteric component. The two key components are simple, design and material. That's it. That's all there is. Our design, we took many existing designs and took the best of all of them and then added our own upgrades, which we'll cover in just a second. So we feel we have the best design on the planet, the most functional design on the planet. Secondly is material. The inexpensive boards from China and so on and so forth are made out of polypropylene, ABS, PVC, and uh, uh, that costs, you know, depending on the market, anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar a pound. Now let me ask you this, with regard to the PVC, because um, you, you see this in PVC pipe, mm. you know, if, when it's exposed to the sun, mm. It has a tendency to break down, it right? It brittles, it, uh, um, it uh, degrades in the UV, and it uh, literally loses mass and deteriorates. Yeah, and, and where do we typically put our traction boards when they're not in use? Uh, on the top of the vehicle in the sun. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. okay. Extreme UV exposure C carry, is carry part on. of the course. <laughs> uh, so then your um, nicer boards, the uh, past industry leaders, like the, uh, there's a couple of Australian import boards. Um, they're typically made out of nylon, nylon six to be specific, which is a a premier plastic uh, polymer. Uh, good stuff. A lot of your nice roof racks, uh, different things that are made out of uh, polymers utilize nylon six. It runs uh, anywhere in the market from typically around two and a half to three dollars a pound. Uh, things have been spiking here lately and hard to get everywhere, but because we have American supply lines. Um, we utilize an experimental polymer. But because you have American supply lines, you're able to continue to make the product. Is that what you mean? Yep, yep. The material that we use is a extremely high performance uh, polymer. We had the full help and support of DuPont R&D. As a matter of fact, they'll be here later today. They've been instrumental in our success because while we did get the tooling and the design, uh, you know, uh, fixed up. The material science was a real issue for us. We had set a fairly lofty goal when we said we want to make the world's strongest plastic board. Fortunately, we feel like we've achieved that. So uh, we're, our material is about twice as expensive as nylon six. It performs about four to six times better. We've maxed our testing capabilities out at 52,000 pounds where um, the material was still performing fine. And where is the weak spot of the nylon as compared to what what is that difference when you when do you see the difference sure you'll see the difference in two areas one the nylon is substantially stiffer it uh, will bridge an open gap better than uh, our material because our material is more flexible um, but the bridging capability is probably the least used capability in recovery boards our still work fine for um, crossing down trees, rocks, anything like that. If you've got a bona fide open gap, a ditch in the road, you may want to, you know, uh, stack several tracks together, or you're going to want to put some rocks under right. it. You want to uh, support that somehow. Now, the problem with the nylon is that it doesn't have near the capability to support a load um, as our material does. The most of the imports have a, a stated weight limit of 10 to 12,000 pounds, which voids the warranty after use of that. Uh -huh. They have a stated terrain limits of no sharp rocks and stated temperature limits of nothing under freezing. That's, that's the big part that I catch is it's more rigid, which is a positive at, in certain it's cases, true. but that rigid, rigidity comes at a price of brittleness mm. at, at extreme temperatures. And honestly, freezing is not really an extreme temperature. You're going to start to see nylon um, start to lose serious performance characteristics 
just right at freezing. It's uh, wow. not a bell curve. It's a uh, it's a cliff that drops off, and because nylon is one of the few polymers that actually absorbs and reacts with water. And people don't understand or believe that some plastics actually absorb and react with water. Even after it's cured? After and it's cured, after it's yeah, your uh, weight of a nylon product can vary by anywhere from uh, 4 to 10% from equilibrium, which is already going to be, depending on where you live in the world, somewhere around 4%. Interesting. So, so a more humid climate... Would it's going to be a more flexible and a more you know, humid climate. Interesting. You can actually rejuvenate your nylon product a little bit just by soaking it in a hot bathtub. That's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you lose the uh, weight of it if you have accurate scales. Also, it's going to jump by you know, somewhere from 4 to 8%. We don't have any of that to deal with the action tracks. We'll take a popular Australian import. This is made out of nylon and, uh, as you can feel, uh, fairly stiff. Mm -hmm. That has a um, stated weight limit, it has a, a stated terrain limit, and uh, temperature restrictions. This is an action tracks, and it's made overseas. I guess that there's at least 500 people between the people working on the line making the boxes down from me, the guys downtown making the stickers, my little crew, the mailman that picks them up. I figure there's 500 people that make a nickel. Including, uh, including DuPont. Yep, including DuPont, which is critical because they have the capability to make raw materials from source to finish without importing uh, base components from foreign countries. So even with all the restrictions that have, we've been imposed on over the past year or so, you've been able to continue to make product without issue? Correct, yes, correct. I wouldn't say completely without issue, but more or less uninterrupted. Right. So, <clears throat> so you feel me. ours, and it's uh, substantially more flexible, yep. um, which allows you to use it in sharp rocks. You can use them in extremely cold temperatures. And when you stick one of these boards under your tire, one under your vehicle that's already half stuck, there's not much clearance, and you're going to find that the boards don't lay flat. They're sticking up like this, and they're trying to hook up on your body panels. Right. And you, say, hey, you need to walk up and kick it down. And just hold it, uh, you know, your co-driver. I, I don't recommend getting close to the tires and be careful when you're doing all these kind of things. But you right. understand what I'm saying. Yep. We've found that the benefit um, restriction comparison, as you were saying, uh, as you get stiffer and pick up certain capabilities, you lose other capabilities. Right. Uh, through 19 different trial runs, tests, and variations, we decided that this is the best balance and gives you the best tool in the field. Let's cover... One of the things that I believe is unique, I don't think I have seen this anywhere else, are the teeth. Mm -hmm. So ex explain the purpose and why those are useful. Sure. Th this is a sawtooth end because we found that out in the field, all these tracks, uh, as we tried to use them as a shovel to clear some material away from the tires, they were extremely poor uh, tools to use. Dull. I mean, you just you might as well have a little piece of wood in your hand right. scraping it up. So we said, how can we do that? Cause well, it's interesting sunk, because many are used to the beaver shovel. Mm -hmm. And then if you've got a beaver shovel, crazy it's beaver, got the, yeah. the crazy beaver. It's yeah. got the crazy ends on the end the of it which, for the same purpose. Yeah. We uh, ter carried that same concept because we all I like serrated blade pocket knives as well. So this sawtooth end, when the vehicle is sunk down and there's no room to dig anyways, this allows you to reach in there and make lateral cutting motions and saw a, a small one, one and a half the way. inch slot yeah. that you can then slide the track into, get just that extra inch or two of contact with the tire tread. Let's look at the next feature, which is the obvious, is the studded mm. portion of that, and, and how does that actually reflect throughout the entire board? Sure. Uh, the metal teeth are a simple uh, off-the-shelf hardware. Because that really is the Achilles heel of any of these tracks, is these little nubs. As you wear those off, um, they become less and less effective. Yeah. So I started just experimenting around putting in off the shelf hardware. Turned out it works better than the teeth I was making. It costs less than 50 cents a setup. Um, I could upgrade someone's boards for under 100 bucks and uh, they're fantastic. And they can always replace them at will. Yeah, so what we did in the molding was we, we noticed that as we were drilling them out, repairing them, that the drill bits always wanted to skip around on these slick mm -hmm. polymers. And we were center punching them with automatic center punches. So we just put in little divots on the back of every tooth here so that as you wear them off, which can happen either through um, misuse 
or extensive use. Right. Or heavy vehicles. Or it's just that it was a really ugly stick and you really needed to get out. <laughs> there would be a lot of things that wear them off. And it's not really any fault of the board, but with the action tracks, you can just go back in and easily uh, cut or grind off the remainder of any partially uh, tooth. You don't even have to cut it all off. Just cut a good chunk of it off. Get it kind of flat. Come in here, drill out the back with a quarter inch drill bit. Uh, flat washer, quarter inch by three quarter bolt, quarter inch flat washer and a nylock nut. And make sure that you don't over tighten it. You only want about one to one and a half threads exposed. Otherwise it becomes a little sharp for the rubber. Right, right. And uh, you're going to have an incredible uh, metal tooth track that hooks up with your tires like Velcro when you're stuck. Now, I gotta say, with, when you start to saw metal teeth, if you exert extreme forces between the truck and the tread and the tracks, something is gonna give. Right. There's gotta be a failure point. So you've just changed the failure point from your tooth to your tire rubber. So if you start to saw metal teeth, don't get too aggressive with spinning your tires, which you never should anyways. Right. Put the tracks in, put it in low. If they're spinning too much, you're doing something wrong. You wanna put it in like low that. and slowly crawl out. If they're not hooking up, you need to adjust and try again, try going the other direction. If you need to, you can get your tire jack and use this as a sand foot to keep okay. the jack from sinking into soft material. Explain the, the purpose of the nylon. Um, yeah, rope. we sew these in-house. It has a loop in the end, so slide it through there. A simple half hitch. When you are in soft material, these can be hard to find or even push deep down in wet uh, mud, nastiness. You don't want to be down on your hands and knees trying to dig these things out. Right. So when you put them under the wheels, leave this out to the side, do your business, walk back up, grab the end, yank it out, uh, and you will also be able to find it. Because if you've ever lost a ski in the powder, you know sometimes it can oh, be yeah. right in front of you and be difficult to find. And then finally, um, I noticed that the, I, believe, I can't remember if you mentioned this or not, but the hand mm. holds are a lot thicker, or there's a lot more gap there, so you can use them with gloves a lot easier than that I noticed that this, the typical um, I can barely get my knuckles in that yeah. part. It's, it's especially um, if you have big really, hands, really you're, wearing, you're yeah. wearing a ring, you got gloves. Right, right. Most of these There is quite a bit of difference there. Yeah, most of these, I mean, that's because we're practical day in, day out users. So we have design tweaks. We also, you can use uh, multiple different uh, mounting solutions in our board. Most of the mounting manufacturers, we work real hard with them to make sure they accommodate us into their designs. One last question. If you... If a person is looking to get traction boards, do they get two or do they get four? Two is good, four is better. You offer both types. Right. So you have the standard as well as, as, well as the studded. Yeah. Uh, when is it better to choose the studded over the standard? What we're comparing is these are obviously going to be more sturdy. They're going to be they're studded. They're not going to go away. Whereas these will be easier on your tire, but you can also wear through them. Is, is that the... That's the consequence With, with aggressive of, use of them, I guess. Yeah, that's the term. ultimate consequence, but the part that's going to matter to you right there when you're stuck and miserable is that these are going to actually grip your tire better. When you're trying to, where the failure is, is the hookup. They're right, sitting right. They're spinning right here, and they're just not grabbing exactly. enough. Exactly. So if you can dig into that rubber a little more. Just a little bit. Yeah, you'll get a, a much better grip, which will then initiate the roll uh, and full contact. Now with that said, first thing you do when you get stuck, if you haven't already done it, is let some air out of your tires. None of the tracks work that great if you yeah, got 40 PSI in your tires. Absolutely. So let some air out, even put the track in to where you think you're gonna place it before you let the air out so the tire sags onto the track. Mm. Pro tip. I like that. And, and that actually helps protect the tire as well because Absolutely. you're less likely to spin it, which therefore you're less likely to damage your tires. More, more grab means right. you're moving and you're not, not uh, braiding. Right. Yeah. So I think, that's, uh, I think that's it. Guys, I hope this has been useful. Thanks for your, your candor course, and your of sharing of, of, of this. I, I feel like I made a really good choice. So, Thank you, David. Uh, I did want to say that I, I did this on my own idea. So he didn't pay me to come by here and shoot this. I, I wanted to shoot it because after I had used the boards, I felt like it was something that you guys wanted to want to know about. And so that was that was my choice. All right, so here's something I've done. I've currently got it in four wheel drive. I'm gonna take it out of four wheel drive, put it in two wheel drive. You know good and well, I'm just gonna spin, right? So that should get me sufficiently stuck.
Mission accomplished. What we're going to do next is we're going to go on the shelves on the way out and we're going to utilize these as as ability to reduce how far you're going down because there's a couple of shelves that are more than my Jeep can handle and so I'm going to put a couple of rocks in there put these on top and see how that handles let's see how that does Thank you to all of our customers, and thank you, Dave. Appreciate it, Casey. All right, buddy. Well, that's it for today, and as always, make life amazing.